Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hi. Want well, to uh, just announce a couple things. Uh, there are two uh, things as far as special giving. One is to the Midwest Mission Distribution Center. There is the tornadoes in Iowa, and then there's also a, a special uh, recognition of Ukraine and wanting to support humanitarian aid there. So those are two very worthwhile mission opportunities. Uh, we are planning on having a brief meeting after church today for the administrative board. So board members, if you can hang around for a little bit, uh, take me a little bit of our coffee time and, and we'll have a quick meeting. Uh, otherwise, are there any other announcements or things that need to be lifted up? Okay. As you are able now, would you please rise and join with me in the call to worship. The Spirit calls us to trust and pray. The Spirit calls us to take courage as we travel the path with Jesus. Teach us your ways, O God, and it is on our prayers. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Behold the beauty of the Holy Spirit, and bless God's holy name. Amen. Our opening hymn is actually 140, 140, Great is thy faithfulness.
Please be seated. Uh, this is uh, our Lenten journey, and I don't know if I mentioned uh, the color purple is uh, the color of Lent, and that stands for royalty. And you see Jesus as a king, and also special in biblical times, uh, if you were to wear purple, you had to have quite a bit of money because there's a special dye that they used uh, that would turn clothing purple and uh, like I say, it's very expensive. So it is the color of royalty. And of course we think of Jesus and that image of him as king. What are our joys, our concerns and those things that we would lift up and share with one another in God today? Mark. Okay, we're going to pray for Mark and this friend of Michelle's that lost a spouse. All right. Uh, remember Ukraine? Yeah. I mean, I think that's. Do you ever hear anything from uh, our friends in Belarus? They're doing okay. They're concerned about the future, what the hell is going to impact them. But yeah. Okay, so Andrew and Galena are doing all right in Belarus, uh, but still, it's a concern. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, their mission and ministry is, I hope, going well for them. Yes. Good. Okay. All right. Let's uh, join in our opening prayer. God of all nations, you promised Abraham and Sarah that their descendants would be more plentiful than all the stars in the night sky. You made a covenant to guide them throughout the ages, just as you guided our ancestors in faith. Guide us here today and teach us your ways. Help us remember the ancient stories, even as we place our trust in you and exalt your name. Bless us as we follow the path that leads us to the cross with Jesus. Amen. Let's go to God now in a spirit of reflection and prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, for the signs of spring that are coming. For the lengthening of days, for warmer temperatures that are on the way. For the joy of planting to come. We especially want to remember Mark during the season of grief and loss over a spouse. And uplift in body and spirit. Again, do only what you can do. We think of Andrew and Galena and their ministry in Belarus. Uh, keep them safe. Help them to continue uh, the vital work that they do. And we especially pray for the people of Ukraine. There's just so much ugliness there with the realities of war. And yet we pray that somehow your spirit would move in the midst of that to provide resources where they are needed to uplift again and body and spirit help these individuals through such a heart-wrenching time and where we can be of support. Help us to reach out. We pray for the community of Dexter that we will be vital in, in reaching out to those around us and be able to proclaim a message of good news and a message of hope as we pray now that prayer that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Anybody here know what it is like to be like in a free fall? Yeah. Yeah, not good. Um, this morning, and I don't have any kids here, so we're not going to do this, but... I can be your kid. You want to, I don't know if I want to do this, so... <laughs> pass me? Is that what's going on? Yeah. All right. Ready? All right. Ready to go. Why don't you talk me? Yeah. I'm glad I lost weight. <laughs> You're braver than my little kids at the other church, Chris, so they wouldn't do it. I tried two or three of them, and I had their dad with them, and they still wouldn't do it. The dad was ready to catch them, let them jump in their arms, and I couldn't get them out of the pew. So thank you for your bravery. You're welcome. You know, that is kind of a tough feeling, though, to know like you're free falling unless you got somebody behind you. And I think that's kind of the picture that we can often have with God is, is that, you know, with life, you know, you feel like you're falling in things, that reassurance, you know, that God's behind you to help you can make all the difference in the world. So let's pray. Lord, we are ever thankful that, um, especially if we find ourselves in free fall, you're there. And you will help us through whatever situation, reality we find ourselves in. You'll be there to catch us. Amen. And our hymn is not the most friendly to sing. I found that out this morning. But really look at the words in that hymn because they are, I think, very fitting and appropriate for today. So it's faith while trees are still in blossom, 508. that wasn't that easy, so good job. 
The call to offering, God is ever faithful and the supplier of every good gift. The promises of God can always be trusted. May we trust God as Abraham did. At this time, we will be receiving our offering, which can be put in the plates here at church. And for our viewing audience, of course, you can always send your gifts to United Church in Grand Meadow or here at the United Methodist Church in Dexter. prayer. Holy God, our light and salvation, the stronghold of our lives, accept these gifts as a token of our commitment to walk in your ways. Amen. You may be seated. Today we're going to look at uh, an Old Testament passage from the book of Genesis, chapter 15, 1 through 12 and 17 and 18. And this is the covenant that God makes with Abraham, or Abraham, as his name later will be. And it shares, After this, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord and he credited to him his righteousness. He also said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to take possession of it. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, how can I know that I will gain possession of it? So the Lord said to him, Bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a dove and a young pigeon. Abram brought all these to him and cut them in two and ranged the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. Then birds of prey came down on the carcasses, but Abram drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abram fell into a deep sleep. 
and a thick and dreadful darkness came over him. When the sun had set and darkness had fallen, a smoking fire pot with a blazing torch appeared and passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram and said, To your descendants I give this land from the wadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates. May God bless this reading of the word. Well, about a week ago this last Saturday, I got this bright idea that the weather sounded kind of nasty for the evening, later afternoon. They were talking snow and, you know, potentially of rain, freezing rain, and I really didn't want to be out on slick roads, so I thought, okay, well, no problem. I'll just do some stuff in the morning, take care of what I want to do, and get home before the weather gets bad. Good plan, I thought. So I went out, did all my stuff, the roads were great, had no problems whatsoever. Pull back into Dexter early afternoon, get ready to get into my house, the parsonage, and of course I pull out my handy uh, garage door opener, hit the button, nothing happens. What's going on? So I keep hitting it, you should see me hitting that button, you know, come on, open up, and the door will not budge. All right, well, let's see if it's a possibility. I don't think it will be, but I'll check all the doors and see if I left one open. Of course, everything was locked up, tired and drum, all the doors, so I couldn't get in that way. So I had one option left, and I was hoping that I had a key out that you know one of the prisoners here has, and so I said, well, if they're home, maybe they can give me a key to get in the house, because my keys are locked in the house, so... You know, I'm not going to get in without them. And so with a little bit of searching, we finally found the key that they had to the parsonage, and I got in. And so from that, I kind of learned that uh, probably would be kind of a good idea for me to have a key somewhere outside the house. So if that happens again, I can get in. You know, the best laid plans of mice and men, you got it all figured out, you know, and things don't go according to plan or the way you think that it should be. And you look at this passage of scripture today, and Abraham is pretty frustrated. I think basically, uh, you know, God has given him a wonderful promise that he is going to have two things. Descendants as numerous as the stars and some land. You know, that's what God has told him. You're going to get these things. And now Abraham is wondering, you know, because he seemingly is well past childbearing age. He and his wife you know, are past the age that normally people would have children. And how can you have children, you know, or descendants as numerous as the stars when you don't even have one child? In fact, he's kind of even gone to a backup plan and said, you know, okay, well, since I don't have an heir, I'm going to have Eliezer of Damascus, one of my slave's children, who will kind of be the one that carries on, you know, the family name and be my heir. And God reminds Abram, no, I promise you that you would have descendants as numerous as the stars. I promise you this land, and this is going to happen. And it's interesting because, you know, through us all, Abram is just, you know, understandably asking all these questions. Well, you know, how is this going to be? How is it going to happen? I mean, you know, he just doesn't, you know, understandably get how, you know, this is going to happen for him. And the second part of this passage is where things get really interesting because there's this sacrifice that Abram offers. And again, you know, God says to him, okay, bring a goat, a heifer, uh, a ram, and a dove, and pigeon, and, and make the sacrifice. And so he does that, and he has kind of this pathway. If you had, you know, figure all these animals, they sacrifice, you know, creating kind of like a pathway. And through that pathway then comes a torch and this fiery pot. Now to us, you know, it's like, what on earth is going on there? What is happening? Well, in this vision, okay, basically that fiery pot and that torch, they're symbols for God. So they represent God. Now, Abram himself does not go through, you know, the sacrifice. He doesn't walk through it. But the fiery pot and the torch 
go on through. And kind of what we need to understand a little bit about sacrifice in the Old Testament and biblical terms is, is that basically if you do something like that, if you walk through, it says, the understanding is, is that if I don't honor what I promised you, what happened to that sacrifice is going to happen to me. So in other words, you know, if, if I don't keep my bargain, what happens to the animals? That's what's going to happen to me. That's how sure God's promise was to Abraham. You know, he was saying, you know, you know it wasn't Abraham that walked through it, it was God. And God said, you know, I promised you this stuff. This shows how much I'm willing to back, back it up. You know, that I'm going to deliver to you what I said I was going to do. You think about that, and we are in the midst of Lent. Now, God honored that promise to Abram. But we also think about how Jesus came into this world, lived, walked amongst us, you know, knows what it is to be human, and still yet be God, and he'll take that journey to the cross. That is how much God cares not simply about Abram, but all of us. What God is willing to give, not to Abraham, but to all of us. You know, Abram was known for his faithfulness. But when you think about what God is willing to do and what God is willing to give to show to be faithful, you know, every promise that God makes, God is always going to keep. Now, God may not give us descendants as numerous as the stars. He may not give us a piece of land like he promised Abram. But anything that God promises is going to happen. You know, God is going to deliver. Because that's how faithful God is. Life is crazy. It's challenging. And, and especially now with all the realities of what we're going through. You know, you don't really know from one day to the next. Everything is so fluid. But in the midst of it all, God is faithful. And that's what you can hold on to. That's what you can trust in. That's what you can believe in. And like I say... You know, as God was there for Abram and delivering his promise, so God will do the same for us. Let's pray. Lord, we see your faithfulness to Abram, and he struggled, he doubted, and that's understandable. As righteous as he was, as faithful as he was, he was human. And we all have our struggles and things, but in the midst of it, as we see what happened as you went through as the flame and as the pot and you delivered on that promise that you made to Abraham, so will you also be faithful to us. And that's reassuring, that is wonderful. That is the grace that we need to understand and hear and the wonder of your love revealed in Christ and what he's willing to do and give for us as we offer this prayer in your name. Amen. Seven oh seven, Hymn of Promise. <clears throat>
I want to encourage everybody to stick around for coffee time and fellowship following worship. And again, the uh, administrative board will be meeting briefly. As you're able, would you please rise and join with me in our dismissal and blessing. Brothers and sisters, stand firm in Christ. Trust God's promises in all things. Take shelter in the Spirit's loving arms in times of trouble. Go in peace to love and serve the world. Amen. The setting song is in the faith we sing, 2008, Let all things now living.